Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment on this video saying I subscribed. Let's get into it. The Cochin Shipyard LTD, CSL, has said it is bullish on future order flows and is expected to sign contracts worth 5,400 rupees crore with the Navy for building eight anti-submarine warfare, ASW, corvettes. Right now, we have a balanced work in aircraft vessels, two 500-seater passenger vessels and another two 1,200-seater passenger vessels. We are also building a sophisticated vessel for the DRDO, Defense Research and Development Organization, CSL Chairman and Managing Director Madhu S. Nair told Express in a recent interview. As for future, we are expected to sign contracts worth 5,400 rupees crore for building eight ASW Corvettes for the Navy. We have become L1, lowest bidder, and there is a process to go through. We expect to sign the contracts soon. In ship repair, we expect to pick up orders worth 600 rupees crore on a yearly basis, he said. This would be in addition to the regular orders CSL receives for Inland Waterways Authority of India and other small fishing vessels. Nair said the first ASW Corvettes have to be delivered in 42 months and then two vessels every year. China made history Thursday by becoming the first country to land a spacecraft on the far side of the moon, a feat India is expected to repeat soon with Chandrayaan-2. Not a lot of information is available on Chandrayaan-2 just yet, but the overall mission is similar in objectives and area of operation to the Chinese craft, Chang'e 4. Its launch date is yet to be announced, but its landing site is expected to be close to that of Chang'e 4. Chandrayaan-2, India's second mission to the moon, will comprise an orbiter, a lander named Vikram after the father of Indian space program Vikram Sarabhai, and a rover. It was supposed to be launched Thursday, but the mission was postponed. The landing site for the Chandrayaan-2 rover is expected to be between the two craters Mansinu C and Symbolius N near the southern pole of the moon. The orbiter will go around the moon at an altitude of 100 kilometers, acting as a communication relay between the lander slash rover and Earth. The far side of the moon can never be in direct line of sight with Earth, proving direct radio communication impossible, which is why the orbiter is needed. By the end of this financial year, the Indian Air Force IAF, will soon owe Hindustan Aeronautics Ltd, HAL, dues of 20,000 rupees crore, 200 billion rupees, says its chairman, Armatvan, including 7,000 rupees crore, 70 billion rupees, carried forward from last year. While the IAF has held back HAL's payments, it has paid foreign vendors on schedule. Ministry of Defense, MOD, sources say DAS Alt Aerospace has got close to 20,000 rupees crore towards 36 rifle fighters contracted in September 2016. Smaller sums, in the region of 2,000 rupees crore annually, have been paid to Boeing for contracts signed in 2015 for Apache and Chinook helicopters. Das Alt deliveries of the Rifle Fighter are due to start later this year. The same is true of Boeing. On the other hand, as Mothbun points out, the IAFO's HAL money for aircraft, helicopters, and services that we have already delivered. Current dues are 15,700 rupees crore and will rise to 20,000 rupees crore by March 31. With no payments coming in, HAL had The government of India will deliver four more Mi-25 gunship helicopters to the Afghan Air Force with the delivery of two gunships scheduled for the month of March this year. This comes as the Afghan officials had said earlier that an agreement has been signed between Afghanistan, Belarus, and India for the delivery of the four gunships. We will receive the first of those two in March hopefully. It's just a process that's taking time. The other two should come in June or July. It's just a matter of preparation. They will arrive soon. Hamdullah Mahib, Afghanistan's national security advisor was quoted as saying in an interview by Strategic News International of India. India has played a major role in the reconstruction of Afghanistan since the fall of the Taliban regime and has invested over $2 billion in various reconstruction and infrastructure projects. With an eye on countering the ever-increasing presence of the Chinese Navy in the Indo-Pacific region, a new airbase INS Kohasa will soon be made operational in the Andaman and Nicobar territories. The new airbase at the archipelago in the Indian Navy Air Station INAS, 
Kohasa near Diglapur, will be able to handle operations of helicopters and small aircraft. The base has been readied for operations of helicopters and small transport aircraft and gives an optional landing and operating base to military pilots while operating in the island territories, which are stretched over around 1,000 kilometers from top to bottom. The new base will be inaugurated by the Andaman and Nicobar Command Chief Vice Admiral Bimla Verma on January 24. With INS Kohasa, India adds more teeth to its defense capabilities in the region where Port Blair, Kar Nicobar, and Inzbaz facilities are located at the Greater Nicobar Islands. The base which was earlier known as Inz Shipper was renamed after the addition of new facilities. A riot gear for women police personnel and paramilitary officers, taking into account their different bodily measurements have been designed by the Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO, the country's agency tasked with the military's research and development. The suit, dubbed to be the first of its kind, was displayed in Jalandhar at an exhibition organized on the sidelines of 106th Indian Science Congress, inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Jalandhar, Punjab, on Saturday. Till now women have been using the same riot gear designed for men that do not fit them well, said Indrajit Singh, technical officer, Defense Institute of Physiology and Allied Sciences, DIPAS. The new suit has been designed based on anthropogenic measurements of women from different parts of the country. The Air Force has got a go-ahead to construct 108 modern shelters to house fighter aircraft in forward areas on India's northern borders at a time when China has ramped up activity in the Tibet Autonomous Region, which overlooks Arunachal Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, and Ladakh. The Union Cabinet had recently allocated about 5,500 rupees crore for the project to build the next-generation hardened aircraft shelters, said three senior officials aware of the development who asked not to be named because they are not authorized to speak to the media. In the past few months, there were reports of increased activity by the People's Liberation Army, Air Force, which has carried out several exercises, including moving troops at a rapid rate in the Tibet Autonomous Region. New Delhi needs to adopt dual-track policy to stand up to the challenge of more potent Chinese missiles in the neighborhood as a result of the collapse of the US-Russia Treaty on Land-Based Ballistic Missiles. While India's military-industrial complex recalibrates its strategy and response, there is a need to dampen machismo in the global air by examining the possibility of a fresh missile limitation initiative. The Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, scrapped recently by US President Donald Trump, doesn't ring a bell in India. Neither should it. The painfully achieved Cold War era pact was between Russia and the US and it required both to destroy their stockpiles of ground-launched ballistic and cruise missiles with ranges between 500 km and 5,500 km. By all accounts, the treaty was a success. It led to the dismantling and destruction of over 2,500 missiles of both countries, quarterbacked by a rigorous verification regime that lasted till 2001 and followed by 30 meetings of their special verification commission. एपिसोड के लिए इतना ही अगर इस वीडियो को लेकर आपका कोई सुझाव या सजेशन हो तो उसे कमेंट सेक्शन में शेयर जरूर करें अगर आपने इस वीडियो को लाइक और शेयर नहीं किया है तो इसे लाइक और शेयर करें और चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करना ना भूलें